Do you know the largest agricultural commodity produced in India? Rice? Wheat? Think again. The right answer is milk. Yes, it's milk. India's milk production has increased 100% in the last 15 years. Today, India produces 188 million tons of milk a year and accounts for 22% of global milk production. The per capita availability of milk in India of 394 grams per day is much higher than the world average of 294 grams. In fact, out of 10.8 million tons of butter produced globally, India alone produces 5.8 million tons. Most of this is converted to ghee for consumption. USA, the second largest, produces just about 50% of what India does. Such, really, is the scale of India's dairy production. India is truly the land of milk and milk products. These have been an integral part of the Indian diet and culture since ancient times. Yet, unlike the Western countries, dairying in India is primarily a rural household activity managed mainly by the women in the family. Surprised? It is actually very similar to India's handloom industry. Individually small but collectively big. Milk represents a massive 26% of India's agricultural GDP. It is an important source of income to about 80 million rural households. Dairying is the economic engine for India's agricultural sector. Now, can you imagine the damage from a scandalous attack on the image of India's dairy? The economic fallout for India would be catastrophic. Behold, that's being attempted. A recent, shocking attack on India's dairy sector came all the way from Canada. Canada's International Development and Research Centre, IDRC, allotted as much as Canadian dollars 1.9 million, roughly around rupees 10 crores, to Guru Angad Dev Veterinary and Animal Sciences University in Punjab in the year 2017. The motive was rather nefarious, tarnish the image of Indian milk. Using this huge foreign funding, the university produced a fake report claiming consumption of Indian milk would involve cancer risks in view of heavy pesticide contamination. Their study was published in an online journal for global access. But when asked for evidence of laboratory tests such as chromatograms, both the university as well as Canada's IDRC would not be forthcoming. Complaints were even sent to the Prime Minister of Canada and to Canada's High Commissioner in India only to be met with a stoic silence. Experts are of the opinion that this Canada-funded study is completely fabricated and fake. The researchers did not establish the limit of detection, LOD, limit of quantification, LOQ, reporting limit, RL, etc. following the prescribed protocols. These are the fundamental requirements in any pesticide residue analysis. To allege cancer risks from consuming Indian milk on the basis of a fabricated study is nothing but rumour mongering with an intent to harm India's dairy sector, our economic engine. ICAR scientists analysed 453 milk samples for pesticide residue and found none exceeding the residue limit. In such a worrying scenario, some questions need to be asked. Can India allow unchecked foreign influence in our universities, leading to compromised research integrity and fake reports? In the USA, the White House, Congress and the federal funding agencies have all issued communications, new regulations, policies, guidance for dealing with the issue of undue foreign influence on research integrity. The time has come for India to urgently think on similar lines. Foreign donor agencies in India, such as Canada's IDRC, do not come under the Foreign Contribution Regulation Act 2010. The impugned milk study funded by a foreign entity should serve as a wake-up call for specific regulatory oversight to ensure research integrity in our universities and research institutions issued in defense of Indian dairy sector by Center of Environment and Agriculture.